All right, guys, I'm finally under my row here. Took me some time to get situated here, but uh, uh, my wife decided to stay at uh, Joshua's game, and I'm getting the work in here. But uh, today during the row, you guys, I wanted to give you, uh, or share with you just a, a talk. And um, so I'm gonna do it as I row here. I have at least 3,000 miles, which I wanna finish my talk. So whatever comes later, I guess. Um, I really wanted to talk today, again, to, uh, it, it's not to only men, but it applies to, uh, you know, what is it to be a man? And that's not necessarily just a man as uh, our sex, but I guess what is it to be, you know, to have integrity, to be uh, full of virtue, but, you know, I've had different coaches presented in different ways, um, but in the football world, you know, you get hit or you're not showing toughness or you're not doing the right things. Uh, talk about man up, uh, be a man, you know, and, it, and it's not, again, it doesn't necessarily just have to do with the, the sex, but a certain toughness or a way to be, but it's not just being tough. And so I wanted to talk about that again, and I actually even got one coach called the man up principle. Uh, so what is it to, to be a man? Well, there's several different approaches. Yes, we have what the world says. It is, and the world says, get what you want, when you want, with whom you want, however you want. You know, that is the message portrayed everywhere. And, you know, from my experience, it's very visible, you see it. And uh, people are living that way or doing that way. And it's funny, you know, I'm really aging myself as a veteran player, but, and I'm not talking above anybody here, guys, I was there. I, I behaved this certain way uh, in my youth, through my collegiate years, first out of college, and it's maturity, right? But, you know, every year you can tell who the rookies are because they got to use the F word, every other word, uh, talk uh, about women, you know, womanizing, things like that. And it's to no fault of the earth. It's a very secular school that they came from most of the time. And that's that's it. It's their, their time away from home. Sure, now it's time to get what I want. To be who I want. And that's where it is to be a man. But if you guys really think about that definition, do what you want, with whom you want, however you want, who are you actually defining? It's funny because you know, I'm a father. It's a lot harder to see these things until I had kids. But that's my children, you guys. My children, and this is all kids, is what I'm saying, is when they wake up, it's impulse oriented. They see something they want, they get it. They don't think of the consequences. They, their brother or sister has a toy, they hit them and go get it. They don't want to do something, no. Uh, you need to tell them uh, uh, the rules of the house. The law and especially, my kids aren't teenagers yet. For those of you who have teenagers, or who are teenagers, I was there too, you guys. I think I know everything in the world. Right? And, man, my parents are in the Stone Age. They don't know what's best. I know everything. And I, I know we all go through that period, you guys. But I try to ask all of you as I'm speaking here to sit back and, and really think that, that through. Get what you want, when you want, with whom you want, however you want. You know, me, mine, and more uh, is what I think of. Whoa. Very self oriented very selfish and you can see it has nothing to do with being a man you know uh, 
for those, you know, again, what the world says is to be first, to get yours. And it's very pleasure focused. Well, again, you guys know my faith, but it doesn't just come down to Christianity, uh, any of the world religions, uh, monotheistic religions, and definitely Christianity. What are the principles of what it is to be a man? First off, whether you're Christian or not, and don't just take my word for it, do research, but Jesus Christ, the man, the historical figure, there is nothing in this world written more about. There are more books on that one figure in history, more writings, more talks, more history, than anything else that we are taught in our schools and we're taught in anything in the world. So, again, that's not to sit here and tell you to be Christian, uh, but I want to, to come with that context. Let's take the religion out of it and just look at it. And you can go to Gandhi, you can go to any of these major worlds, and a lot of the principles are the same. So let's talk about these principles, either godly principles or trustworthy principles. Virtuous, you know, I see that in my boxes, I think that's where I live by here. We're seeking virtue. That's what it is to be a man, you guys. And so, you know, first thing, as I'll say time and time again, God is described as love. You know, in the Bible anyway, uh, 1 Corinthians talks about love. You know, how he is love. The two laws that he said we can hang the whole law on is love God with all your mind, with all your heart, and with all your soul. And the second, he basically made equal to it, like it, he says, love your neighbor as yourself. Or do unto others as you would have them do to you. So, we need to orient our lives like that, you guys. Whether it's as a husband or a father. Uh, again, mother, uh, wives, daughters, sons, all of us, you guys. We have to orient yourself to that. Is what I'm doing reflective of that? How I respect humanity how I treat others, all those kind of things. That's what being a man is. Again, it is my opinion that Jesus was the greatest man, but you can take other manly figures throughout history, and I can guarantee you they all have and carry the same principles, which are, again, self-giving, self-dominating me last, instead of what the world says, is you first, me first. He teaches us, the first will be last, and the last shall be first. He also describes himself as the way, the truth, and the life. He talks about truth a lot. And so, again, without getting, trying to Say it for me, truth theological, is if you just look at the truth. You know, the true nature of human beings. You know, what separates us from the beasts, the animals of the world? Right? They're pleasure groups. You know, I worked with cattle before. You put a bowl around some heifers, it don't matter how many of them heifers come by, he's going to give himself a piece. I don't talk like that because that's what I think or how I act, but I know in our world, that's being taught. That's, that, that's, that's how you establish yourself as a man. That's not true, guys. Truth is, is it have anything to do with love? Love of humanity. You know, and the, the deeper part of that is, guys, we are created in the image and likeness of God. So, whether you're talking a baby in the womb, to the elderly person who, as society, we have told aren't worthy anymore, 
you know, we did great. You guys, it is because of it all we, that we are here. Yeah, Mike, we always owe them that respect, that love, and that dignity. And we all hope and pray that we can live to be that old. But when we're young and in our youth, we got to show respect to those people. Men, all of us who, whether, you know, there's a lot of places where uh, it's a lot of men, whether it's on a construction site or the locker room, you guys. Even when the opposite person isn't there, the opposite sex isn't there, what have you, watch how we talk to them, you guys, because it comes down to what, how we talk, how we think, is who we are. You are what you repeatedly do and say and think. So, and again, guys, looking back to children, you can ask yourself, sorry, right, nobody. Ask yourself when you look at children, do children exercise self control, or is it us as parents who try to teach them? Meanwhile, you guys, every other entity outside of that home, not every other entity, but many times the world and the powers that be are telling your children, are telling you and I to do what we want, to get yours. That's not self-control. Self-control is, that doesn't mean you're never going to have a bad time, you guys. I'm not here to tell you that. I'm not telling you here, here to say that I haven't committed any one of those things in my life. But what I am saying is we are called to something greater. And for us to be men or women is to treat others how we want to be treated. To have self-control. That's with your eyes, if it's we're talking about lust, but it's also with our addictions, with the things that uh, drugs or alcohol, you guys. Okay, all of those take us out of our soul. It helps us, makes us lose control. And if it does that, and if you do it with that purpose, that's not me. So then, you guys, oh yeah, I'm over 3,000 already. I'm feeling it, but I'm on a roll here. So the other thing, you guys, is so how does this person live and act in the workforce? Whether it's at work or the football field. You know, I have played with a lot of Christians, you guys, over my life that are that turn the cheek type of gate guy even on the, the football field. And actually, I'm feeling it, so I'm gonna just talk now. Ooh. I love this rower, you guys. 3147, pretty good. Again, guys, just good way to get back in and get this sweat going. But as it relates to how we live it in the world, not just the one hour a week when we go to our do our religious practice and then go about our business. As you guys, it's always part of your mental, emotional, spiritual, and physical being. And so how do you live that at work? Well, you still gotta go to work. You still gotta answer to the boss, uh, you know, that, that, that's always the case. But you can still hold true to what you believe in and, and live is, is the best of your ability. And especially, you guys, I wanna to talk to you as athletes out there on the football field, is you can still be that, that warrior you're called to be. In fact, if you look historically, you look in the Bible, you guys, you will see some of the greatest stories ever. 300, the movie 300 is nothing compared to the stories in the Bible, and I promise you. There are some great stories there where God-fearing men who lived that type of life were still warriors when they were called to be and went into the world, into their battles, into the relationships with that belief. And when they were called to do something, whether it was go to war, battle, or whatnot, and they held true to their beliefs, were unstoppable. And I just want to give you that, that hope, that belief is, guys, 
don't let the world quiet you about your faith, about your belief. Just take it with you. Let it be part of you. It doesn't mean, uh, you guys, I'm sharing this with you because it is part of me. Okay? That doesn't mean I have to shatter it at every door or whatnot. It's I have to live what's true to me. Live the, you know, trustworthy principles, uh, principles of truth, of virtue, that I am not. I'm not virtuous, you guys, but I'm seeking it. And that's all I can do. Uh, there, there is one who, who was, and I'm trying to emulate my life uh, after him. And so I just want to encourage you that, guys, at work, it doesn't mean that you have to be this meek and humble guy. Now, th there's, I don't want to take away from those words, is meek and humility are the greatest virtues God had. Uh, again, the, the one who I was explaining earlier who has more written about him than ever, any other being ever who lived turned his other cheek time after time again and was more powerful to the point of death. You guys, the, the pains, and this is, again, take the Bible out of it. You can look up any historical book, you guys, and, and again, based on the things we're taught in schools, way more information on this kind of stuff. How he was crucified and nailed through his wrist. That pain alone would would kill most of us. Okay? And meanwhile, took it. Before that, you guys, he sweat blood. The the scientific evidence of what it what pain that would be is insurmountable. To sweat blood. Unfathomable. And he did this knowing that he was gonna have to endure this pain and suffering. Uh, so don't ever let anyone tell you that, that he wasn't a man. He was too meek and too humble. Uh, toughest man I know. You can't show me one tougher. And, uh, and so if you can emulate yourself after him, it doesn't mean that you have to go fist the cuffs with everybody that, that, that comes. But there is a time and a place to do that, to stand up for your beliefs. But other than that, just live full of love. That's who, that's who he was. That's, that's what, we, we need to know is is love one another do unto others as how you would have them do to you and so I want to thank you guys for spending time with the rower on me today um, it was uh, my pleasure and a, a complete blessing to get to share that with you uh, and uh, again write me uh, email me uh, ask me any questions again I'm not an expert on, on any of it you guys but uh, I do spend a lot of time studying it and and it uh, it goes with me everywhere I go. It is what uh, has blessed my wife and children and uh, gotten me to the point in this life that I'm at. And uh, without him, I could do nothing. And I know through him, I can do all things. And uh, so, again, that's what it is to be a man. That's what it is to be a person of virtue, is, is seeking it. Knowing that hey, it's not achieved, there's only one who, who did, uh, but the rest of us, can seek it in his footsteps you know he didn't excuse us to oh because I did this for you that you don't gotta live it no we're called to be men we're called to be those virtuous people everywhere we are not just an hour a week uh, and I'm speaking to to myself more than anything you guys I hope you always know that is uh, I think I've expressed before in fact as soon as my wife gets home here uh, I'm going to confession because I'm broken and, uh, uh, and I'm not that person, but I'm working to be. And uh, he taught me to, the uh, guy I keep talking about told me to repent, repent, believe and repent. And that's, what I, that's all I know. Uh, so, again, before I ramble too much here, God bless and look forward to seeing you next time.